take four. Alright, so it's my favorite time of the day, riding time. Yeah! Alright, so last week we worked on beginnings, and you guys have got some awesome beginnings down. We've been planning out our middles, and now of course it's time to move on to getting a great ending for your stories. So just like we talked about with the beginning, you want to slowly introduce someone to your story, slowly welcome them in. We wouldn't be abrupt about it. And it's the same way with our endings. You know, we use the, the example of someone coming to your house and welcoming them in. And just like that, when they're leaving your house, you wouldn't abruptly just take the food out of their hands, set it down, and tell them to leave. You would instead, you know, maybe say, would you like some more? Would you like some dessert? Maybe you would have some conversation in the living room afterwards. And you would wrap things up nicely before they leave. Now, I know I've read some stories where the, the story's going great, it has a great beginning, things are moving along, and then all of a sudden, abruptly, it just ends. It's almost like someone was out of time, so they just ended it in the middle. And we don't want that to happen. We want to keep following through with our great stories and have a good ending that's satisfying to the reader. So, um, now there are some things that are pet peeves of mine for endings. So, one of them, one of my little rules is you're not allowed to say that to say the end. And the reason is, if I've gotten to the bottom of your story and there are no more words left, I know it's the end. You don't have to tell me it's the end, right? And so I know when you've run out of words and there's nothing left, that it's the end. So don't write the end. And the other thing is, you're not allowed to say, she woke up and it was all a dream. <laughs> because, you know, why do we read stories? Why do we read stories, Lucy? Because they're trying to, because the story is taking you to different places. Yeah, and we meet new people, and we maybe get to be part of someone else's family, and we get wrapped up in new worlds. So we're experiencing all these things, even though it's a fiction story. And so once we get to the end of that story, that's like this big moment where we find out, did the character get their goal, or did they get what they wanted, or did they solve their problem, or whatever it is. And so it's not very satisfying when someone, you know, you've been through this whole story, you feel like you're part of the story, you feel like you understand the character and what they're going through, and then you get to the end and it's like, and she woke up and it was all a dream. It's kind of like, just kidding, none of this really happened. And so we don't want to use that ending either. So I'm going to give you some ways that we can try to end our stories. Um, now, one thing I'm going to do is, just like I did with the beginnings, I'm going to show you and share some endings of stories. These are stories that we've all read, so I'm not going to be doing any story spoiling for you. But um, I just want to read a few of these endings so we can kind of notice what other authors are doing with their endings. So, of course, we love Tacky Locks. And the ending of Tacky Locks goes like this. Tacky Locks was an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. So, Emily, what kind of ending is that? Yeah, we're learning something about this character. So it kind of wraps up how we feel about the character. Even though through the story, Tacky Locks has some issues and is really weird, we, it wraps up by saying something important about the character. It's okay to be really weird. It's a good thing for Tacky Locks, and it's a good thing for all of his friends that he is different. And so one of the things we can do is we can say something important about the character. All right. Now, the chocolate touch, we read this one, and this one ends like this. In the corner lot, there was nothing to be seen but a heap of rusty tin cans and broken bottles surrounding a signboard with new lettering that said, sold. Elena, what kind of ending is that? Setting. Setting. It's saying something important about the setting. So it's saying, you know, now we know that this place was sold, so that's important to the story, and it wraps things up nicely for the reader. So yes, we can use setting to wrap things up. Okay, another story we read was The Lemonade War, and in this one, it ends with this. That night before she closed her door, Jesse Whisper shouted to Evan, who was already in bed. Hey, I've got an idea about getting Megan's money back. So what did the author use in this? Dialogue. Dialogue, right. So in this one, something important is being said. Something important is being said at the ending. Now, Bertie, we visited, whoops, we visited this one when we were working on beginnings, 
because it had a great description of the setting in the beginning, so we used it for that. But, yes? Um, we're using the same things as we are in the beginning. Did anyone else notice that? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you're exactly right. Very observant. So, in the beginnings, we can start with a character description. We can start with the description of the setting. We can start with dialogue. And what do you know? Character, setting, dialogue. <laughs> we can use the same types of things and devices that we use in beginnings as we do in endings. Good. So let me, as I was saying with Verdi, um, this has a great ending that I think you guys will like. Leaping and looping with his little striped friends, Verdi left. So what do we call that kind? Alliteration. Alliteration, right. you don't think of fluffiness and softness, right? Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the story it says, and Fluffy didn't mind being fluffy anymore, even though he wasn't. So this is kind of a different one. It's not really up here. Does anyone know what kind of ending this is? Right? A lesson. Kind of like a lesson, yeah, or a way that the character might have changed. And so let's see, I'm going to say um, lesson or change, like maybe we notice a change in the character, because we know our characters through the story should have some kind of change um, to have that story arc. Now, these are examples of the same type of ending. And what this is, if you've read any of these If You Give Up books, like if you give a um, mouse a cookie, if you take a mouse to the movies, if you give a dog a donut, if you give a cat a cupcake, if you give a pig a pancake, yeah. And so all of these start, like for instance, if you give a mouse a cookie, he wants that cookie, but then he's going to want milk, and then he's going to want a straw. And then he keeps wanting things, but at the end, when he gets that milk again, what does he want? A cookie. So it starts just like it ends, and we call that a full circle ending. And Jan Brett does a lot of full circle endings as well. So in The Umbrella, she starts with... Drip, drip, drip. A little puddle appears in the green umbrella. A tiny green frog leaps down and slips into the water. Ola, fro froggy croaks happily. I have this puddle all to myself. And then in the ending, drip, drip, drip. Water falls from the roof. A little puddle appears in the green umbrella. Froggy slides down the handle and slips into the water. Ola, froggy splashes happily. I have this puddle all to myself. So it's a full circle because it's beginning and ending the same. So it's kind of a satisfying ending because you feel like it wraps everything up and everything's back to where you started. It's also okay. an onomatopoeia because it goes through. You're right. Total. So we also have an example of onomatopoeia in there. So it's kind of a combo. So it's full circle, repeating the onomatopoeia that they had at the beginning. Um, and the dialogue because he says, hold on. Okay. So, yeah, those are some great examples. Now, I'm going to give you an example from a book that I'm working on. So I always like to try to give you some kind of modeling for my writing. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to write it in front of you, but I will read it to you. So the beginning of my story starts like this. The terrible scream of the tornado, tornado siren cut through the sound of the wind, causing goosebumps to break out on my arms and neck. And just to give you a little background, the story is about someone that is afraid of a lot of things. Okay, afraid to try new things, afraid of storms, afraid of a lot of things. And so then I wanted to use actually one of these types of endings, lesson or change, to show the change in the character. So at the ending I have, he was asking for volunteers for the mission trip in a dangerous area in Mexico. I took a deep breath and stood up. And so that is to show that, you know, even though she was terrified in the beginning of many things, by the end, I am showing the reader how this character has changed and learned some lessons. And so that's my example of writing an ending that I've been working on. Now, what I'm going to have you do, I had you all pull a book from our classroom library or a book that you had in your lockers or your desks that is a book you've already read because I don't want to spoil any endings for you and have you take your AR book out and read the ending right now because then you won't want to finish the book. Sure, you know what happens. So I. I want you to look at that book that you've already read, 
and I want you to look at the ending that the author used. And we're going to share out a few of those and see if we can maybe add some more things up on our chart here. Okay, so go ahead back to your seats. Did anyone find some good examples or maybe even some examples that we don't have back there? Callie, what do you have? And then for the very first time in the memory of anybody who lived in any of the colorful houses on Sunnyside Terrace, Gusted Bloom Smile. Okay, so what kind of ending do you think that is? Um, like a change. Yeah, a change in the character because it says for the first time ever, Gustav Bloom smiled. So yes, that's a that's showing a change in the character. So we've got that one up there. Good example. Maddie, what did you find? Nice and loudly, please. Okay, so mine is hope. It's maybe the guys will stop saying I Maybe Mayor Hubble will find a way to get out of jail, again, but it won't be easy. Okay, and I like how you figured out what kind of ending that was. It's hope, and I will add that to our chart. So sometimes things happen in the story, and they wrap it up by giving us a sense of hope that good things are going to continue, and that's a nice ending, too. Does anyone else? We'll take one more to share. Bryce, what is yours? Um, and dogs, and stick dogs, stomach was finally and happily silent. Okay, so what kind of ending do you think that is? Um, I think it's a solution. Okay, so what was Stick Dog's problem in the story? In the beginning, it says that um, he is hungry and he wants a hot dog. He wants that hot dog and he's hungry. And so at the end, it's saying his stomach's silent. He's no longer growling from being hungry. So his, we know it, it wraps up nicely that the solution has happened, the problem is solved. He got to eat. Okay, so nice. So I'm going to add those two up here. Hope and solution. All right, now while I'm working on that, what I want you to work on, you guys all have your papers out that you have your nice beginnings on there and some of the draft or outlines of your middles. And what I want you to try to do now is think of what a, a good ending might be for your story. And we'll share some of those in a minute. All right, so you guys had some great endings. Um, I have a couple of examples of full circle endings that I want um, people to share. So Brock, I'll let you go first. Read your beginning and your ending. So the beginning is splish, splash, splish. The puddles splash under her feet as she tried to find a home. And then the ending is splish, splash, splish. The puddles splash under her feet as she walked home for the break. Okay, so she by the end we find out she has found a home. Okay, great. Olivia. I, my beginning is, I love the smell of fresh pancakes in the morning. Time to eat. And my ending is, the smell is there yet again. Pancakes for breakfast. Okay, nice job. Okay, so both times she is at breakfast and there are pancakes involved. So it's a full circle. Okay, and then I saw, who was it that had an example of um, character change from the, Madison, was it you? Come on up here. Abby finally found her place in life and her true meaning. Okay, so um, I'm assuming that in the story that the character was having trouble figuring out who she was. And by the end, we have a nice satisfying ending. Solution, come on up. Okay, I have to read my beginning and end because my beginning is like part of my end. Why did you eat the cupcakes? Those were for your sister's party. And then my end, okay, it took me two hours, but I managed to make a whole nother batch. Okay, so I'm assuming through your story that she doesn't really want to make it up to her, but then at the end she yeah. finally does decide to. Okay, mm -hmm. great idea. Okay, you guys all had some wonderful endings. I'm so excited for when we get to turn our little outlines now, all of our planning into our full stories and get to share those.